busy day for you on Saturday, Mike, and uh, a sea anemone, as well bred as you could ever hope, out of the Group 1 winning mare, Alboran. See, what are you expecting, Mike? I'm expecting a good run. She's a nice filly. Um, she's showing us uh, pretty good work at home, um, obviously well bred. Um, 1,200 shouldn't be a problem. She's got plenty of speed. Um, she's fairly well tried, uh, albeit I always like to leave a little bit for improvement. Um, uh, one thing I certainly hate is having them 101% wound up first time out and there's no improvement. So she's going to improve with the run, but she's done a, enough enough work at home um, to deliver what she, what she shows here. Um, if, she, if she delivers a homework, she'll be right there. Lovely. We've uh, spoken about this on several occasions and Simple Simple finds herself with a number one next to her name after seven lengths to Feather Boa. Ridiculous rating. Um, I honestly don't know what races sometimes these handicappers watch, but she's been given a 93 for being a loser and well-beaten loser. Um, when you've got uh, us, like I think it's uh, Labicia, who won by eight lengths, who's a 79, we've got to give him seven kilos. Uh, yeah, well, what do you got to do with horses like this? Hope they run unplaced, ratings drop, um, and she gets to a competitive level. So she would struggle to win a race like this. Um, if she wins it, then she's obviously better than I think she is. She'd be a group filly. But it's going to be tough to give seven kilos away to a colt of the same age, who's just won his last start by eight and a half lengths. Desert Miracle just emptied out in the closing stages and I don't think we need to read anything into Humdinger's run in the charity mile. Desert Miracle clearly just needed that and I'm sure she'll be all the better for it. Yeah, she's a filly we're going to restrict to shorter trips these days, you know, given the well-documented issue of the bleeding that she's had before. I think as soon as we stretch her out, that it just puts too much pressure on the lungs. So, um, you know, basically treating her as a sprinter, um, I thought it was a great run. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, Samanga got some stick for it, but I can tell you now, he wrote exactly two instructions. His instructions were to sit last and sit on her as long as possible and let her go the last, but she just didn't get there. So, but he did nothing wrong, uh, and um, I was perfectly happy with the run and the ride. She has made improvement. Um, obviously, this is up against Colts, it's very difficult. There's, uh, and uh, Sean's filly there has got some very, very good juvenile form. Um, as I say, she's a filly I've always rated. There's no secret about that. Uh, she just, you know, she's had this one issue that I think has been sort of holding her back a little bit. But we've, we, I mean, we're treating her completely differently these days. These days, and touch wood, we, we, uh, things have been going well in training in terms of uh, her respiratory issues. So I'm expecting a huge run from her. On to Ifiko, who goes for a five timer and. Um well, what more can we say? Yeah, she surprised me the way she's ridden through, risen to the divisions this filly and the manner in which she's won. Um, I think a lot has got to do with a really good break she's had, obviously. But um, the other thing is she's, she seems to win her races early uh, in that she gets away from them. I think with the, the softer ground, it's not going to be that easy. Uh, it never is. So this brings a whole new dynamic to her style of racing, uh, the, the, the softer ground. Plus, I mean, we're starting to deal with a real quality field here. So tough field. She's got the draw. I like the outside draw for her uh, down the straight. But this is a whole different uh, division in, in, in terms of what she's, she's gone through. The form's been good. There's been winners come from behind her. So there's no, there's no worries there. The, the worry to me is, is she going to be able to do the same on, on a sticky track as she does on a firm winter track. Okay, the Victory Moon, a race in which you have been successful on several occasions and Sparkling Water returns to racing along with the Derby winner Aragosta and East Coast. Yeah, look, it's, it's an interesting race in terms, uh, you know, on paper, it's, I mean, for punters, it's an absolute nightmare um, with the conditions as they are. Um, but it helps, you know, trainers not looking for penalties and whatever you're going into the, into the uh, into the Summer Cup, obviously. Um, sparkling Water's coming off a nice rest at Maritzfontein, where she, she ran around there for a month and a half. Um, she's doing really, really well, but a tough task at the weights. If you look right down the bottom, you've got Perfect Witness, who's extremely well in at the weights, uh, and a few others right at the bottom. 
uh, just in terms of handicapping. So she's got a lot to do. Um, I can't say I've got massive expectations for Saturday. Obviously, the Summer Cup conditions are way more in her favour. And that's really our target race um, for her with using this as a, as a stepping stone. Um, Aragosta is same thing. Also, has had a, had a nice sort of month off after the, after the um, Durban campaign. Uh, really happy with him. Coming back nicely, but a hell of a lot to do with the weights also. Um, uh, but, you know, we just won, and we try and Blinkers first time. It's a, it's a kind of horse I've been, I've been wanting to put Blinkers on for a long time, but it's hard to experiment in Julys and Gold Cups and all that kind of thing. I think this is the right race to experiment. Um, he's always been that type of horse to me. Looks like he wants the Blinkers. Uh, he's always shifted around in, the, in, the, in found trouble. Yeah, you know, he's... So uh, I'm hope I'm right because I think he, he, you know, he's a couple of lengths better and he's very well handicapped for the Summer Cup. He's not well handicapped here, obviously. So we'll see. East Coast, I mean, he's got a with the first two or three at wait for age terms, he's he's right in with them at Sparkling Water, Aragosta, William Robinson. He's slightly better off at wait for age terms, but um, he's a 106 with a massive plus sign. We don't know what he can be or can't be. With the rest, he's super out of the weights. I mean, if you look at it right down the bottom there, you know, he's level weights with four-year-olds of the same rating. I think it's roughly about 16 pounds this time of the year that he's out of the weights with. But again, we don't know what, what he is. Fortunately, with the conditions of the, uh, of the race, the handicappers can't get their paws on him. And if he does, when he gets six pounds, big deal, you know. So we'll take that if it, if it happens. But we'd like to see um, what we have in the three-year-old crop. Um, Funny enough, if he ran unplaced here sixth on top of them, it would be a massive run uh, on paper. Yeah. So, yeah, time to find out. There's not much in terms of prep into the Dingons, although I think that's slightly on the short side for him. Uh, he's more a derby horse. Um, I'm just interested to see, you know, where the three-year-olds are. And, um, you know, as I said to you, fortunately, the handicappers have got hand handcuffs on you because I think if they ran last, they'd destroy him. Well, I think it's actually a masterstroke, if you don't mind me saying so, because, you know, running him in the Graham Beck would have been pointless. No, that would have been a wasted exercise. I, I'd rather, yeah, because uh, with the greatest respect for the field, half the field is dead, in my opinion. Uh, prepping horses, including, you know, some of mine at the top there, I'm not saying they're dead, but they are prepping, you know, they're not 100%. So I thought it was, a, it was probably a good race to have a crack and, and just see what's out there, you know. Al Fatik. He backs up quickly after not a bad run last time out. Yeah, he actually missed quite a bit of work. Um, uh, his run on Tuesday wasn't bad. It was a good gallop. He was finishing it off nicely. He's a horse that runs in snatches, so I'm going to stick a set of blinkers on him for Saturday as well. He wants this trip and more. Uh, he came out of Tuesday remarkably well. So I'm, I'm running him, and I think he'll go close. Excellent. And then Silver Theatre and uh, Sharapova, who's obviously a first-timer. Uh, Silver Theatre comes out of what probably was quite a strong maiden, I would think. Yeah, to be honest with you, had this maiden been in the program, I wouldn't have run him last week because he's been looking for 1,400. But it was one of those last-minute jobs. So I decided to take the chance, back him up. He's a very sound horse. Uh, good form lines last week. If last week hasn't shaken him up too much, which it doesn't seem to have, he's got to go close. He's a fit horse. Um, it's a competitive field. Sharapova's a very nice filly uh, out of another Russia. Starts the 30, 1400 for the first time. Is obviously going to want more. Will improve a lot with the run. I think she'll run very well, though. I wouldn't leave out of anything. It's quite remarkable. I mean, you, you've trained the mother. You've trained another Russia. I, how does time fly? Makes you feel old, Andrew. That's the problem when you trained. We wouldn't have a granddaughter. Of, of of the grand yeah it's it's quite mind-boggling but it, you know it's um it's also very satisfying in a way training the progeny of fillies and, and stallions that you trained and and made and prepared in, in the past so it is also um a very fulfilling good luck sir mark prescott in the arc <laughs> trained three uh, generations <laughs> yeah well we we'll, we're going to get to the maidens first and about the arc